Hi guys, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Industrial Chemistry video series. This is number 20 and we've started to have a look at the process of saponification so we want to have a little bit of a look at the action of the cleaning action of soaps in this video. So what we need to do is first of all we need to introduce a new term, surfactant, um, in order to understand the structure, uh, not only how soap acts, but also its structure and why that structure is related to the function um, that it has. And this means we, we need to explore this term surfactant in a, just a little bit more detail. One thing I will point out at this, at this moment is the, um, if you look at the interface here between where the head of the soap is sitting and the water molecules, you'll get some idea of how this particular process works. In very simple terms, each soap molecule is made up of a tail, and the tail is um, made up of a series of carbon and hydrogen bonds, so therefore uh, it's nonpolar. The head, on the other hand, is uh, in most cases the head of a carboxylic acid after the hydrogen has been removed. So it forms um, an anion. And being an anion, it therefore um, is able to attract polar molecules such as water molecules. So that's the basic idea. Let's go into it in a little bit more detail now. Firstly, this term surfactant um, comes from surface acting agents. And so uh, surfactant is really a contraction of that expression. And there are any chemical substances which can decrease the surface tension of water. In your preliminary course, you had a look at surface tension as one of, one of those uh, quite interesting properties of water, almost allowing it to behave like the surface of a trampoline um, as the forces underneath were able to be uh, quite strong supporting the weight of, of very light objects. Now the surface acting agents actually um, interact with that surface tension and decrease it, meaning that there, uh, it, there is more possibility for mixing of the water and particularly with things that are traditionally not things that are likely to mix with water such as dirts, oils, grease, those sorts of things which are immiscible or, or don't dissolve in water. Uh, often separate as separate layers, uh, and this allows the, the, these materials to actually be more thoroughly mixed within the water, which is what you want when you're trying to clean things. So any cleaning uh, agents, and this includes detergents, which we'll look at later on in this topic, but certainly things like soaps are very effective surfactants. The main reason for that is, as I mentioned before, a very long tail made up of carbon, carbon, uh, bonds with hydrogens attached. So effectively, carbons all along the way uh, of these tails with um, hydrogens coming off them periodically um, in a uh, consistent manner, uh, as we've seen before. Um, the only difference really is these are much longer chain uh, molecules than we've dealt with in the past, with the possible exception of polymers. Um, and uh, and so they, uh, but other than that, everything is all the same. There's, there may be some slight differences in uh, terms of whether we're talking about uh, an acid, fatty acid that is saturated or unsaturated. So that may uh, mean we have either the presence or absence of double bonds. Um, but this part of the molecule is all carbon, 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 hydrogen bonds, and therefore there's no polarity. And if it's nonpolar, um, then we call it hydro phobic, a fear of water. It does not combine with water molecules. The um, consequence of that is that because we know of the rules that like dissolves like, whilst uh, hydrophobic um, carbon hydrogen um, tail is not going to attract water, it is going to attract substances that are similar to it, that is other long chain molecules or things that are non-polar that are um, able to, unable to mix with water will be able to interact with the tail. The other end of the soap is the head. And as I mentioned uh, in the earlier slide, this is the anion component of the uh, acid. So all the rest of it is the tail behind it. This is the region that is the head 
Uh, it's the region that's going to be attracted to the sodium ion um, when the salt is formed. So you'll have an interaction uh, here occurring between the anion of the acid and the cation of the sodium ion, which has come from the um, sodium hydroxide. Because this is polar, um, it uh, is a hydrophilic region, which is just water loving. And so this consequence is that you have um, a readily uh, uh, ready interactions between the head of the soap, the anionic uh, region at the front of the soap, and uh, other water molecules. So this end will bind to water molecules, even though the other end will not. Because one part of the soap dissolves in water and the other will dissolve oils, the soap molecule is actually forming a bridge between the oil and the water. And this is how it does it. It creates something called a micelle. And I'm sure you've all seen micellar water being uh, sold as something that's good for removing things like cosmetics. The cosmetics are not uh, water soluble. Um, otherwise, every time you went out in the rain, everything would wash off. Um, and even when you were perspiring, you would find that a lot of those would um, be dissolving. So we want to make sure that these materials will sit on sort of in our face and, and not readily dissolve. They're also, um, because they're attached to the skin, they, they uh, can be quite oily as well. So removing um, makeups um, can be a bit of a problem. Um, so you need something that's going to enhance the, the water to be able to dissolve uh, the makeup. Soaps can do this. So they don't just um, do this by um, rinsing or washing it from skin. They do it from fabrics. They do it from uh, surfaces, all sorts of different things that we use soaps for as cleansers to create this bridge between water and other substances which do not dissolve uh, in water. The way that it does this is to actually surround, usually the emulsion that's formed is the creation of a series of micelles that isolate the oil or fatty molecules from the rest of the water. And you'll see that in the next um, diagram. The key point is this one. More soap molecules come in surround, uh, to surround an oil molecule with their tails attached to the oil and their heads sticking away. And so the heads are going to be attracting the water molecules, which are going to be sitting on the outside. The tails are sitting into the oily molecule. So it looks something like this. The hydrophilic heads are attracted to water. So this is going to be sitting in the water out here. Whilst in the middle here is where our fat is going to be, in fact, potentially all the way out to those um, hydrophilic uh, heads can be a nice little fat molecule that sits inside um, the waters and now being, is being completely surrounded by these little um, soap molecules, creating this circular or, or what would be a spherical, because of course um, it is three-dimensional, um, structure called a micelle. You can draw this just as a little circle with the heads on the outside and the tail sticking inside. Of course, if we had a reverse emulsion where there was less water and it was all oil, then you would find heads on the inside and the tails on the outside. So the key to this is to make sure that we have um, each of the substances that are not miscible with the solvent um, being completely surrounded by these little um, soap molecules that are creating this bridge to form these little micelles, decrease the surface tension, and allow uh, things that would be normally immiscible, like oil and water, to mix together. Thanks for watching.